Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again for another Market Watch Investments video for you guys tonight. Getting things started with DD Dynamite. So, kind of been on a little plethora of burn cards of late, and there's a lot of really cool traps that do some pretty devastating stuff. My personal opinion, White Mexican theory here DD Dynamite is one of the greatest all time burn traps of all time. It's just pretty incredible. There's a lot of removal stuff and tech and utility you can use to take advantage to great heights of this card and it's just a really awesome old card there is a dark revs common i think there's three different reprints all common here in the tcg this is my personal favorite i think this is the most valuable in my personal opinion being the original og print out of flaming eternity and this card's relatively cheap you know uh again you always go for first editions and a near mint first edition here is roughly around almost two bones if you factor in shipping it's a one stack same as this here and here's a 29 stack from Game Time CC here, lightly played first editions for about a bone, just under a bone here for lightly played. And there's a 29 stack here, all first edition and five plus pages. So it's kind of interesting enough. I feel like this got a little bit more on the market. I feel like the last time I covered this card a long, long time ago, there wasn't quite as much on the market for the OG prints, but definitely a plethora on the market to choose from here. So really awesome and really interesting that this card has not seen a hollow reprint because it's just too good to be just a common. Next is going to be Just Dessert. So this is a super old school Gen 1 card. I would not disregard the original like the original first edition prints that came out of a couple starter decks. I believe it was Starter Deck Revolution Kaiba. Starter Deck Kaiba and Starter Deck Kaiba Revolution. This came. So I would not disregard, more specifically, the Gen 1 Starter Deck Kaiba first edition prints. This obviously being a higher rarity as Ultra Rare. And granted, it's just an Ultra Rare, but... It's the only hollow version, the hollow print version that we have here on the TCG, and it was out a really cool set. Collection, Legendary Collection Kaiba was an amazing reprint, just completely blowout, great set, just like Legendary Collections 3 and 4 and 5Ds and all that stuff. Legendary Collection sets are always great money, especially the Secret Rares are just so beautiful. But this is a really cool card, and uh, a plethora of burn decks that are out there like to use this card tech it in every once in a while really cool again gen generation one nostalgic very awesome artwork and it's cool that we finally got a hollow rare preprint of this card and it's going for relatively good money i mean it's pretty much two bones pretty much all across the board and again you're always going to want to go first editions and there's five plus pages on the market for this so really great stuff with just desserts really quick i wanted to spotlight cosmos so cosmos is a really cool if I'm so bold to say, I believe it, it's, it goes without saying, it's a relatively big uh, player favorite deck. Uh, there's a lot of players that really just love to pilot this deck. Uh, the the artwork and the theme behind all these cards, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, it's it's kind of hard not to notice the, the Star Wars re re resemblance, uh, the takeoff of, of the Star Wars stuff. And, you know, you know R2-D2 and 3-CPO here... Um, using some like force choke stuff obviously the spaceships and outer space kind of theme pretty much all the monsters have either blaster pistols or lightsaber like equiv equivalents really great stuff and i i'm a huge star wars nerd white mexican loves star wars i've loved star wars since i was a little kid and i just i love the artwork all the artwork is really cool and they have some really amazing secret rares and some of the stuff is still worth pretty good money, like OG print. I know this just got a gold reprint, but Dark Destroyer, obviously, being, you know, the OG monster, you know, roughly on 15 bones. Cosmojo is pretty much going for 15, 17. You got Cosmo Dark Lady, which I think this, still to the day, I think this is a solo uh, solo print, if I'm not mistaken, coming as a secret out of Shining Victories. Really great artwork on that. All this great stuff, but my personal favorite is actually Dark, Dark, uh, Wicked Witch, I'm sorry, Wicked Witch. I, the artwork is just so blowout. This, um, I, I don't want to say it only has two prints. I think that this is the the only hollow version. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it only has two prints. It has premium gold, infinite gold, which is gold secret, which, actually, which, which sounds horrible, and that picture does look really garbage. It does not do it justice. The, the gold secrets, not all of them, but some of them, like I think there's certain sets that came out that look really, really good, which I'll show you actually worth pretty good money for the blue eyes one. Um, but so common so the original og print was unfortunately common why i i have no idea it's crazy so dimensions dimension of chaos was the original but of course you know the, even though it's gold and and i agree with you guys i really am not a big fan of a lot of of gold printings 
much of anything i really just like the ghost gold hybrids but some of very few of them not all of them but some of the ghost secrets actually look very very aesthetically pleasing in my personal opinion this being one of them i think it looks and it's mostly just because i'm biased towards the artwork i love the artwork on this it's badass she's got like a darth maul double looking lightsaber looking thing and she's in like a space hallway and it's it's you know, it's still secret. Granted, it's gold secret, but it's still secret. It looks great. And Cosmos is just a really fun fan favorite deck, you know, and it's just, there's, that's all I'm going to say about that. You know, this is like a bone, barely even a bone. Super cheap, plenty in the market. So Cosmos, really great stuff. Chain Burst is going to be next. So this is kind of an interesting card to showcase because... The majority of burn decks run very, very trap heavy, and obviously you're not going to play this because you'll pretty much burn yourself out if you're piloting a burn deck and using a lot of traps. But this is kind of an interesting counter card. It's a floodgate, it's a continuous trap, so you can burn your opponent for a K every single time that they activate a trap. So this can be kind of a good counter towards potential burn decks or any deck that is just very, very heavily reliant on trap cards in general. I mean, an example maybe would be Edlick or Eldlich, or however you pronounce it. It's a German name. I, I, I apologize. I cannot pronounce the German things to save my life. But that's just an example. And this is an old-school ultimate rare out of Rise of Destiny. Again, this was the 13th and what I consider the last core booster set in Gen 1 Yu-Gi-Oh! LB through RDS. And it's just an old-school ultimate rare. And it's insanely cheap still to this day. And you can see first the first first edition here, lightly played, is roughly around three bones for you factoring factor in shipping. Three bones here goes to about four after that, and there's only two pages available. But this is just insanely ancient. It's an old school ultimate rare, and I still think it has it, it, it holds up. I think it has some interesting play depending on what the format. Let's go now with the format. The polar opposite to that is going to be curse of darkness so for a while this was well not not too well because this has a dark revs rare reprint as well personally i would go for the og rares dawning out invasion of chaos again gen one amazing nostalgia to the set this is my all-time wait I have, I have a lot of all-time favorite gen one sets but this uh, invasion of chaos is really really important like we got black luster soldier chaos emperor dragon cookie cutter chaos era was just amazing for me i love that format as a kid and just a lot of great memories so invasion of chaos is really special to me but this is just the polar opposite basically every time when magic cards uh, activated the the player takes a grand really cool artwork it's got like this energy ball like dbz kind of effect to it really great stuff energy field and this is just a really good card and you know if you don't play magic cards you can really you know you're it's a slower card but it's a very heavily control card and i think it's just for what it is especially being so ancient such an old card i still think it holds up and it's a pretty cool tech choice for maybe a side deck or something depending on what you're playing unlimited is not really anything you know not even a bone first first edition lightly played so roughly around a bone here same here there's five pages here on the market so plenty of availability to pick through from and these actually have gone down a lot near mint first editions are about half bone now here's a six stack for a while these were a couple dollars for first editions even lightly played so i'm actually really impressed that there's been a replenishment of such an old set here on the market so that's dropped the price r rapidly here it, it's just inc decreased uh, incredibly which is really good because i think this is a really good card and i think this you know for a half a bone for a near mint first edition og print is is really really cool and it's just an old school rare so there's that next is going to be grand maju day Aza, how do you pronounce that that last part? This is the last reprint that we got out of OTS 12 as a super rare. We finally, finally, finally got a super rare or a hollow foil of this. Unfortunately, this card is so good. This is like one of the kings of rogue switch decks, and I love, I, I really love anti meta a lot, and I really have, have kind of a whole separate passion for removal decks and stuff and all the little techie trickery that you can do with removing stuff and how it just it jacks your opponent up so bad when you take the graveyard out of out of out of play and this uh i really wish they would have made this an ultimate rare though the, this card deserves an ultimate rare plus just with like the green and the, and the red it would look so gorgeous an ultimate rare I, I just i really think that they should have made this an ultimate rare and uh the card is just ridiculously good there's just like mad combos for this card and just it, it's it's crazy i love this card a lot really cool artwork or a secret rare i really think that this an ultimate rare or a secret rare would look amazing 
that this card will look amazing in those prints, and I really hope that Konami upgrades it to a, a secret and an ultimate rare sometime in the future, because it, this card definitely deserves it. The original print is a common, again, out of Invasion of Chaos, if I'm not mistaken, it, which is just insanely ancient, and it still holds up. This card is just so, so good, and I love it a lot. So this is the highest rarity. It's a super rare. It's about two bones pretty much all across the board, and there's about four pages on the market, so really not too much of a big deal, but it's the best we have for now, and it's just cool. I'm just actually grateful that we have a, a hollow foil now. Dark Creator is going to be next. Original print, Donnie from Phantom Darkness. This was an infamously amazing dark support set that just gave us... Dark Arm Dragon and just a, like a was it like Dark Greffer and just like a whole bunch of amazing dark dark deck supports cards and just some of the infamous like infamous baddies of the past really great stuff. This obviously being the higher highest rarity. I know there's a there's super rare special edition promos and a couple other prints, but this being the highest rarity, um, it's not necessarily that this is like a super meta playable card, but it is from a very infamous set, uh, Phantom Darkness. This was a, a blowout set back in the day. Really, really great stuff and very up there in age now. And it's uh, of course a high rarity of a secret rare. And the artwork is really cool. I really like the artwork on this as well. And its effect is pretty cool. And I, I tend to play more swords like the dark side of decks. And I really like dark arch dark archetype stuff. Light and dark. Light and dark is kind of like my, my favorite. my Definitely my favorite art attributes and deck types. And there's always great support for light and dark. So really cool stuff. Unlimited are about nine bones pretty much all across the board. Night, light, near mint, lightly played. There is four pages here on the market, and the first first editions that we're going to get this is the bottom of the second page for about 51 bones, and there's two here, near mint, both first editions for 51, and there's about four pages again on the market. So really cool stuff with the Dark Creator. Next is going to be the OG, the Creator from Rise of Destiny. Again, Rise of Destiny, last of the 13, first 13 corsets, corsets my personal opinion, white Mexican theory. And this is the highest rarity as the ultimate rare. A really, really, really cool artwork. This thing like, reminds me of... I, I can't remember the name of it, but it reminds me of a certain character from Dragon Ball Z. I don't know. I can't picture it. Maybe like one of the androids or... I, I'm not, it's been a very, very long time since I've seen the anime, but I love the armor. I love like the pumpkin orange, and of course, being an ultimate rare. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm I'm pretty sure, if I have my history correct, I believe that this set, Rise of Destiny, was the very first set in the TCG that we donned uh, that donned us ultimate rare prints, which was incredible. Back in the day, like we were like, what the crap is that? No one really cared about ultimate rares. It was this weird, like overpronounced rarity, and it really they weren't much worth of much value that I can remember when they first came out but really really cool history merit on that for rds so and this is just a really cool card in general it doesn't really hold up nowadays Yu Gi Oh is just like way too fast but just the sheer fact that this card's ancient as hell it's a high rate of ultimate rarity it's got really badass artwork pretty much takes the cake so unlimited here well there's a there's a first edition spanish slightly played 35 bones if you guys want to get a spanish one and then the first english one is going to be about 39 bones for lightly played Again, you're only going to want to go first edition for this. It's going to be more for collectible and nostalgic, you know, old school player stuff. Interesting about Rise, this interesting fact about Rise of Destiny is all the special edition booster packs actually were all first edition prints. This, this, this set, when it reproduced its special editions, they did not, they were not unlimited packs. All of them were first edition packs. That's really, really cool. They, I don't think any other set has ever done that. All the other ones were unlimited but for some reason konami decided or mistakenly or whatever it may be all the special editions are all first edition booster pack which is really really cool i actually still have i collected like several years ago off ebay i picked up a sealed case of special editions with first edition packs and the ultra promos they came with like gemini elf and gemini elf and what was the other promo was two ultra rare promos i can't remember it was maybe it was four. Oh, it was magic cylinder it was magic cylinder either ultra rare magic cylinder and all or ultra rare Gemini Elf. So anyway, really cool stuff about that. And um, let's see if I can find you guys a a near mint. Doesn't look like there's any near mints here on the first page. So the first near mints is at the bottom of the second page, and it jumps all the way to a, to a whopping 161 bones. And then for some reason, it bottoms out at well, th almost 350, which is very ambitious. But um, not really a lot on the market, so there's that. The Another all healthy alternative is the Secret Rare, which is actually a promo 
out of elemental energy and this card looks gorgeous i love secret rare a lot i mean it, it's no comparison to the ultimate rare obviously the ultimate rare is gonna be the best first edition always but even though this is a special edition promo and it was relatively easy to get back in the day still remember that this is a very 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 old card and secret rare is a secret rare it's still very very nice i mean some people really kind of devalue secret rare because of the mass reprints and the kind of cheaper crappier sets that they put them in or whatever it may be but secret rare is still aesthetically very pleasing and very very gorgeous to me so it's value to me and this is insanely insanely cheap it's like two bones if you factor in shipping pretty much all across the board and there's four pages on this so if you guys want to go for a more affordable route with a great rarity this is the way to go next is going to be sacred phoenix of nephethys neph neph nephthys however you pronounce that can't read english today this is the highest rarity as an ultimate rare dawning from the original set flaming eternity again another really really old set and another amazing rarity. I believe this is this is used in a plethora of couple of different decks that actually use effects to blow it up themselves and then special it back and bas ba basically heavy storm the field. Is it the both ones or yeah, it's all, all all magic and traps on the field. So it just heavy storms the field every time it bounces back and really cool artwork. So uh, we're gonna go into see if we can find some first edition. Unlimited alone for this card is seventy bones starting price for lightly plates. And then a lightly played first edition starts at 136 bones. Then it jumps to 140 bones. And let's see if I can find you guys some near mints. Only two pages here on the market. So this is just insane money for this card. And the first first edition near mint is almost 700 bones. We have our first first edition near mint here for 649 bones. That's a lot. That's a lot of a lot right there so cool stuff for that again there was out of the same the same set as um the creator elemental energy dawned as a secret rare promo out of the special editions again there's no shame in getting the secret rare reprints now granted yes the ultimate rares are a lot more money they also have a you know they're a fatter price tag a lot more difficult to get so it's completely up to you guys what you guys want to do um i would not would not discredit these secret rare promos they are still secret rares they're old as hell they look gorgeous and it plays this the card just the same in a duel so definitely take that into consideration these are pretty much like two bones if you factor in shipping and there's about three pages here on the market so really cool stuff for that now the last version a lot of great versions for this card the last version that i would recommend is actually the dual terminal six rare so if you guys even want to go even more affordable than the secrets, I mean personally, I would I really like this card a lot. If I if I had the dough, I would invest in all three personally. I think these are all phenomenal prints of this card, but this is just insanely cheap. And again, this isn't the most playable card, not the most popular card, but for all the reasons I said before, this is why I'm giving this this card a, a pretty big spotlight in the showcasing here. And again, this isn't even common. This is rare, and it's a DT. You guys know my spiel about DT. DT's discontinued. They're not making it anymore. And I think it's all just going to be really great collectability stuff. And it's well on its way. It already has been bleeding into the collector's market. And it's like a bone. It's like barely a bone pretty much all across the board. Then it jumps to about two bones for the DT version. Only two pages available for this print specifically. Next is going to be Thunder King Ryo. So I'm a big fan of Floodgates. And, and uh, of late, I've been messing around with one copy of Mistake. And it's been working pretty well in my anti-meta builds. But I realized that I took I took the one copy mistake out and basically I I I side th three copies I side a playset of Thunder King, and the reason being it's a little bit more diverse uh, in in my personal builds and with many many anti meta builds you don't run a lot of monsters at all and the sheer fact that this is a mistake it's completely stops searches and it's a, a mistake on legs it's a nineteen hundred beater and you know it can stop inherit summons by just you know contribute it and stop inherit summons completely break down a play which is really really cool a lot more effective than mistake i believe mistake is still a phenomenal floodgate and if you really need like heavy heavy stopping of searching i mean you could do one mistake and three kings it's just completely up to you but i just opted to uh to side three kings personally and interesting enough so interesting on this card that it never came out of a core set this is one of those cards 
one of those obscure cards that came out of like all these like random side sets. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the very first print was actually the manga promotional cards as a secret rare, which is my personal favorite rarity. I mean, the Gort, the ultimate rare, it's very expensive, and it's you know it's ultimate rare, it's turbo pack, it's harder to get and all that. But I think it looks disgusting, honestly. I don't say that about a lot of ultimate rares. I personally do like ultimate rares a lot, but just the the price tag is just so much more significantly fatter for the ultimate rares, and I just think it's so much more uglier. It's just not a, as not appealing to the eyes personally as opposed to the secret rare just looks bright and gorgeous and shiny and sparkly and really really great stuff it's between you know 10 16 bones two versions of the gold gotta admit really not a fan of these golds at all i just don't think they look good i would much honestly i'd rather take a common over these golds but the best is going to be the secret rare for sure so just wanted to spotlight thunder king for a little bit Next is going to be a couple versions of the infamous Blue Eyes White Dragon. This is one of my favorite prints. So Blue Eyes and Dark Magician, Yugi and Kaiba Cornerstones have so many different prints and rarities and all this crazy stuff and collectability and all, and all these different markets. This is a really, really cool print. Um, even though it is an ultra rare and I kind of have a joke about bagging an ultra rare, it's definitely my least favorite rarity, but this this artwork is just gorgeous i love the moon and the little speckled stars and he's on the tower and just the position everything is just super cool i i really really love the anniversary part pack art of this and this has just grown exponentially in value unlimited starting market price there's ocg ones here which we're not really going to pay attention to and there is uh, the first English one here, which, you know, starting market price of 67 bones, and that's for lightly played. First near mint goes up to uh, about 91 bones, and then, you know, it's starting to go to 100 plus towards the bottom of page one, and there's only two pages available. And all these are one stacks, except for, you know, the OCG stuff. But again, this is, that's a completely different, that's a completely different market. Another day for another dollar. So really great stuff on that version. The next version is going to be the original starter deck 2002 generation one Kaiba starter deck version. And what I wanted to say more, the first editions, lightly played or near, have always been like ungodly expensive and collectible for just years and years and years because these are just so ancient. The artwork being, you know, the OG artwork, well, I mean, technically because the, it's, I guess it's debatable because technically I, I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, Legend of Blue Eyes, White Dragon, the booster pack, well, I don't know, I think the starter decks was first, wasn't it? The Yugi and the Kaiba starter decks in 2002 2002 2001 i can't remember i think it was 2002 were like the very first cards in the tcg i think it was just starter deck kaiba and yugi and then i think legend of blue eyes and magic ruler and then and then uh metal raiders came out and all that stuff you know the original core sets I, if i'm not mistaken i can't remember i was very young i i was like nine or ten around around that time so anyway but the the uh, and uh, so going back to that, the Le Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon was a different artwork. It was it was a completely different artwork than this. So that's why I was talking about like which one came first. Was it the starter deck Kaiba or was it Legend of Blue Eyes, which was the artwork that came back? But I think for the majority of players, like they they consider this the original OG artwork of Blue Eyes more so because the anime. This was the artwork that was used in the anime. So the unlimiteds that's why i wanted to bring attention to this so the unlimiteds now have reached new heights they're already up to 21 bones for starting price and that's for not first edition for unlimited which i don't recommend you guys invest in at all and uh unless you can buy it like super super cheap like if it's like you buy like a bulk lot or whatever it may be i would not recommend buying these individually but so yeah about 21 bones is a new market price for the lightly played unlimiteds Really curious. It's been a while since I've looked up a first edition. These are going to be like ungodly expensive here. Here's a Portuguese one for $40 for a lightly played first edition if you guys are into some Portuguese cards. And there's about five pages here on TCGP. This is a... Um this is another Portuguese one, I guess, for first edition for about 70 Another Portuguese. A lot of Portuguese. A lot of Portuguese available here. Uh, Spanish one for 151 a uh, foreign some kind of foreign one for 500 so the again like as everyone's known it looks like there is a solo print solo print first edition of this what what is this if for almost 700 bones for 651 is this english what is this i don't recognize dik oh it's portuguese i guess yeah it's portuguese 
so there isn't a single English print first edition exclusively here on TCG player so yeah that's that's been that's been on the collector's market hit list and uh, will continue to be and yeah just a, a a god a god collectible card really great stuff next is going to be the dark side of dimensions movie pack so this was a really interesting set because it came out as gold came out as ultra it came out as secret it came out as secret gold it came out as all gold like it was there was a lot of multiple reprints i think there was like four or five different reprints uh promoting the movie this this anime movie and it was just really crazy but i always i i always thought about you know how good blue eyes looked in these two rarities you know the standard secret which i don't know why this tab is okay the standard secret here and the gold secret now again i'm not a big fan of gold a lot of players for the most part aren't a fan of gold but for for, for some gold secrets look very very nice and this set did really really well more specifically for the blue eyes i don't it's just i like it it looks really really good again this photo does not do justice it looks like total crap in this photo when you look at it up close and impersonal it's it's looks really really gorgeous and the price point is showing it's pretty great stuff i mean um it's pretty much about six bones plus across the board for lightly played and uh near mints go to about seven four pages here available so Pretty cool stuff on that, and then the standard secret. It's completely up to you. I mean, personally, I think that the gold secrets look better than the standard secrets. But the standard secrets, I know that there's you know a big player base that a lot of people like the just the standard secrets, the the aesthetic of the standard secret, and those are about you know seven bones as well, pretty much all across the board. So you uh, you guys can take a look at that and just really great artwork i love again i mean it's not it's not quite as cool as the you know tower artwork or the og artwork but it's still very very cool there's always some really cool ideas that they have for the infamous blue eyes here and the last card i want to showcase for you guys tonight is going to be chain disappearance best rarities in my personal opinion is going to be the super rare from turbo pack booster six and you know i guess if you want to if you get, get a nice clean first edition original um IOC version as the original OG print. There's a Dark Revs Rare too. So a lot of interesting prints in this. But personally, you know, the supers as the highest, you know, they're ranging from two to about eight bones. But personally, for the affordability and the price point and just the pure aesthetic and aesthetic of it, I would go for this secret rare reprints from again, another very, very amazing set, Legendary Collection Kaiba. And it, it just it's beautiful. I have all several copies of this myself in, you know, first edition secret. Again, make sure you go specifically and only invest in the first edition prints. Artwork is great. Just man eater bug, just getting just annihilated by this chain weapon here. And I don't know. There's just something about this card. I really, it's it's very kind of. It, it is very. It is situational. I'll admit, it's very very situational. And there's not a, a lot of trending that comes along where you can use this card. But when you can, I mean, back in the day, this was used against tour guide. This was a classic tour guide target card. And uh, who knows? Who knows? Cards are always recycling. They're always transitioning. You never know what's going to really be good until it is, until it's like right on top of you for the most part. So, and this card is just insanely cheap. It's like a quarter bone pretty much all across the board. And there's five plus pages on the market. So completely up to you guys on that. Link below is going to be to my Facebook I love Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh has been part of my life for almost two ge decades. I love the brotherhood, the trading, the investment aspects, the dueling, the deck building, all the creativity, all the great stuff. There's a lot of amazing things that this game can bring to you if you just invest some time, some effort, some funds. It'll definitely give back a lot of pos positive energy in this game. I hope you guys are making some fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh investments yourself. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.